my brothers and the sisters in Christ, I do apologize for that prayer a few minutes ago. We will continue with the second reading. A reading from the Word of God written in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8. The entire commandment that I command you today, you must diligently observe, so that you may live and increase and grow in and occupy the land that the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. He humbled you by letting you hunger, then by feeding you with manna with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted, in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The clothes on your back did not wear out, and your feet did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that, as a parent disciplines a child, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Therefore, keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron, and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now pay, turn to page 53, A Song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God. From every family, language, people, and nation. A kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne. And to Christ the Lamb. Be worship and praise dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. Amen. Today's reflection is on Psalm 103. I speak these words to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 103 gives us 22 verses 
of praise to God for his goodness. There are sometimes more for some than for others when we complain about all the woes, the negativity within or around us, sin, diseases, stresses, financial, emotional, and the like. We look at all these and sometimes the list is so long that we feel there is no hope and depression sets in. But God puts us back on our feet even in those moments he delivers us what should we do praise him do we see the list of things that we can actually and should give god thanks for do we acknowledge the many things that we should bless and affectionately praise God for? If we take a look, we will realize that that list is longer than the list of woes. Illnesses and diseases, God heals. Praise Him. Sins committed, God forgives. Praise when someone does something that we are not pleased with, we taught. Sometimes we taught for so long, we don't even remember why or what we taught in, but we still vex with the person. God is not like that. Not so with our God at all. He does not hold grudges as we do. He does not keep his anger forever. In that case, again, we praise him. All that is deep inside us, we should praise him. When we have to take let's say medication, we look at the benefits and also the side effects. The benefit for those who praise the Lord are endless and eternal. God is always faithful to us, even when we are not faithful to him. You know, like when we sin, not doing his work, his will, neglecting our stewardship, not just financial, but when we are not good stewards with what he has provided us with, when we lack the commitment necessary to do what he wants us to do, shirking our responsibilities. How can we look and acknowledge God wonderful nature, full of love, mercy, and compassion, and still be unfaithful to him? Is it because our relationship with him is not as strong as it should be? On another note, sometimes we tend to pay back wrong with wrong, but God he does not treat us as our sins deserve, nor does he pay us back in full for our wrongs. Let's look at this example, our driving attitude. Let's say driver A will recklessly cut in front driver B. 
what does driver B do? He now races up to cut in front of driver A. Paying back wrong with wrong. Just another example. Also, we tell our kids, if someone hit you, hit them back harder. Really? We see how that type of advice has reduced our society to aggression, crime, and violence. When we pray this psalm, we are praising God for his goodness to us, specifically as individuals, for delivering us from some difficulty or trying situation. In praising God, we are actually counting our blessings and recognizing that we have even more to be thankful for. Additionally, praising God gives way for future blessings in our lives to be multiplied. Our list of blessings is inexhaustive, which should make us praise him even more. It makes us want to deepen and strengthen our relationship with God so there is little or no time to indulge in negative thoughts or activities. Praising God completely is using our inner and outer self, using our whole heart to praise Him. Amen. We now say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. <clears throat> Sorry. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of our Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. Lord, Reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. We now go to the collect.
first Sunday in Lent. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit into the wilderness and was tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weakness of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Collect for Sundays. O God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We do the first prayer on page 71. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, creator of day and night, giving rest to the weary, renewing the strength of those who are spent, bestowing upon us occasions of song in the evening. As you have protected us in the day that is past, so be with us in the coming night. Free us from evil, sin, and fear. For you are our light and salvation and the strength of our life. To you be glory for endless ages. Amen. I now do pray. prayer number seven on page 77. Prayer attributed to St. Francis. Merciful God, to you we commend ourselves and all those who need help and correction. Where there is hatred, give love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is sadness, joy. Where there is darkness, light. Grant that we may not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving we receive, in pardoning we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. We now pray for the deacons and the priests who will be ordained in March. Let us pray for Mr. Miles Walcott and Terry DeFreitas to be ordained as deacons. We pray for Deacon Hake Mark, Yvonne Amoy Vincent Moore, Helen Louise Nathan, Denise Rhoda Patricia Hercules, Ferdinand David Pollard, Patricia St. Bernard, and Michelle Alexander, all to be ordained as priests. We now do the prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our parts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power 
of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or conceive by the power which is at work among us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all ages. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. A very good evening and thank you all for joining the live stream of evening prayer with St. Michael and all angels. Again, I do apologize for the earlier break that we experienced today. Do have a great evening and a great week ahead. Good evening. <laughs>